so I can imagine um, all of the countries within the region, these small island states, you can imagine how vulnerable they are. And that as this um, crisis protracts, that it's going to create some fundamental economic problems for us. And the problems are not limited or the impact of the problems would not be limited just to central governments. So you'll find, for example, that private institutions will be affected as well. Even regional institutions, to include LIAT, will be affected. In fact, the survivability of LIAT is questionable. From all indications, LIAT is likely to be liquidated, LIAT 1974 Limited. In fact, there will be a shareholder, an annual general meeting of the shareholders to determine the fate of LIAT. Now, Antigua and Barbuda's position is that whereas we recognize that the four shareholding governments cannot carry LIAT presently, because what would have happened, COVID would have actually, uh, let's say, um, increased the losses exponentially. So, whereas in all of um, 2019, Liat made a loss of about 12 million EC, and that that was within the means of the government to subsidize. You would have found that since COVID and the fact that um, the planes have been grounded, they have to pay the lease payments, and uh, they're not getting any revenue, plus there's some other fixed costs that they have to pay, even if they don't operate. Uh, they have to maintain staff as well, you know, to maintain the planes and so on, and keep some level of administration going. The the um, losses would have increased exponentially, uh, which means that Liat, which was always in a very precarious position, is literally now inviolable. Hmm. And a decision will have to be made, potentially to collapse it and to then maybe the, 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 the um, countries in, within the region have to come together to form a new entity because I cannot see the region going out, going without any form of connectivity. We can't have an integration movement and uh, we can't connect people. I mean, connecting people is critical to the integration movement. But this new entity will require full cooperation of all, full commitment. Uh, clearly, we're going to have to put cash in. The, Governments will have to capitalize a new entity. They'll also have to get private sector participation so that um, we have a mixture of public and private capital, probably to have it um, operated by you know private entities. Uh, but again, what I'm hoping that we do not have going forward with a new entity is any squabble over the location of the headquarters. At the end of the day, the only service that Antigua and Barbuda has enjoyed, unless a service of consequence within um, CARICOM, is LIAT. And this has been the case for several decades. So I just hope that we're not going to have countries within, within the region opportunistically fighting us to get the headquarters in their country to displace Antigua and Barbuda. Because my understanding of um, CARICOM and even the OECS is that there should be shared benefits. You know, the benefits of these integration movements should be spread across the countries. And I hope that, you know, these individuals who may have certain urges and aspirations to fight Antigua and Barbuda for the headquarters of a new entity, that they will understand that that is an extremely inequitable position which Antigua and Barbuda would resist. Now, we also have the view here in Antigua and Barbuda, my cabinet, that in as much as we may have to collapse the existing entity, because it is inviolable that the formation of a new entity has to be done as quickly as possible. Back in 1974, when Liat was collapsed, my understanding is that it took a day to start the operations of a new entity. Now, it may be a little more difficult to get it done maybe within 24 hours. And I do understand that there are a number of um, stakeholders that we have to satisfy, especially creditors. And um, I believe that we can do a workout with the various creditors and to literally get some arrangement in which they can accept that, look, we're not conveniently closing 
Lee at 1974 Limited. It just cannot, go, well, the governments cannot go any further with it. And these creditors have to understand that, and these creditors also include the staff of Liat, that there will have to be some level of cooperation to include possibly some um, haircuts on their liabilities in order to facilitate the creation of a new viable and sustainable entity. And let me make the point here too, that Liat does not have sufficient assets in which it could satisfy the requirements, or let's say the claims of most of its creditors to include the staff at Liat. So Liat only owns three planes and those three planes are charged to the Caribbean Development Bank. So clearly they have a superior claim and after they would have covered their claim, there will be hardly any asset available to liquidate severance and other liabilities to staff and other creditors. So there has to be a negotiated position. I mean, the government's not going to be bandits and just walk away from the staff. There will have to be some form of um, compassionate payment to assist them. But they have to understand that they are legally vulnerable and that they have to look at the bigger picture and to cooperate, not to become litigious and to prevent the creation of, let's say, a new liat. I want to call it a new liat. And let me make the point here too. We should not be running away from the name Liat. Liat is a Caribbean institution built by Caribbean people of which we should be proud. Many institutions within the US, within the aviation industry, even including American Airlines, they've gone belly up many times over. They never discontinued the name American Airlines. Americans are proud to support American Airlines. But whereas they have their chapter 11 protection, we don't have that in our laws. And that is why you need this level of creditor cooperation in order to ensure that we can form a new entity. And let's face it, it's gonna be a right size entity. You're gonna have significant job losses. There's no doubt about it, that hundreds of people are gonna lose their work. It is inescapable. But if you can have a new entity that is scaled down, that is viable, that is efficient, that can meet the connectivity needs, of the Caribbean people, then clearly that has to be the option that we pursue. And I know legally that um, you cannot be conveniently talking about a new entity while you wind up an existing one. Hmm. But I believe that creditors can understand the circumstances. Let us be straightforward with them. Let them know what we're trying to achieve here. And that in essence, we need a cooperation of all. We need a cooperation of creditors to include the staff at Liat. Because if they don't cooperate and a new entity is formed, then they're going to lose everything. Now, the other issue I want to state here too, that if at the level of the various member states that we do not cooperate and to ensure that there's no displacement going forward, especially displacement of Antigua and Barbuda's um, aviation industry, then what you may end up with is every single country within the Caribbean starting its own airline, at least within OECS, starting its own airline, and then all of them will fail. But I, I, you see, it's an opportunity for us to come together and have a better layout, a new layout, in which we all have a policy of um, shared benefit and shared um, burden, and not to be squabbling as to who should have the headquarters. I mean, all the expertise are here, all the pilots and so on, most of them. They're here, the engineers, and I don't see why, you know, we should be trying to reinvent the wheel. Yes, we have to make the new entity far more efficient and to be, you know, more disciplined in the management of the new entity and to make sure we don't end up in a situation in which we have to, um, you know, have a bloated layout again. I mean, so clearly the mistakes of the past, we have to avoid those. But let us not forget, too, that the airline industry is not an easy industry. You know, it's capital intensive. And even with the best of um, management, you know, sometimes you end up uh, making losses. But I think that the Liat brand ought to be maintained. Uh, you can right size Liat, but don't kill it. And I think that with the cooperation of um, creditors, that we can reason with them, do a workout situation. Even if, and look, they have to take a, a haircut, it's just inescapable. In fact, the old Liat, when it is wound up, clearly a number of creditors may not get paid. And that is just company law. That is a risk you take when you do business. But I believe that 
in many instances that there could be some workout situation and you're better off having a new sustainable entity that you can do business with than to literally have you know a collapsed entity in which you will get no value and then you don't have anything substituting the space and maybe leaving a vacuum for some form of let's say extra regional entity to come come to the caribbean and fill that is one of the potential risks that we run if we do not move quickly to create a new layout and i said new layout maybe layout 2020 limited <laughs> because i can tell you and Zimbabwe is not running away from the name layout it's an institution that we have sustained yes with a lot of difficulties for several decades it's a caribbean brand it's the caribbean people's brand the caribbean people's airline and i hope that with the cooperation of creditors when the agm would have been called and you know assuming they're going to liquidate um the, the, the company which i suspect that is what's going to happen and i'm not saying definitively that is the case you know i don't want to preempt the agm but i think i can at least say how i feel about it and what i think will happen and on that basis let us move quickly to re-establish a new viable and sustainable yet okay now now mr prime minister um uh, as far as i can recall a meeting was supposed to be held today is this the same meeting you're speaking about when you speak about the the agm no, agm it has to be a meeting of all of the shareholders of liat i believe there may be probably over 20 shareholders they all have to come together and decide the fate of liat now, in the past, I've heard about, um, uh, you know, I think it was, it was Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez who first spoke about um, uh, Liat, the, the, the survivability of Liat, and um, how we would have gone about it and uh, even suggested to some extent, if I'm correct, that uh, maybe Liat should become insolvent. Um, one of the things that I notice here, Mr. Prime Minister, is that uh, nothing at all can be done in this case. Uh, for example, what about cutting unprofitable routes? All those are decisions that will have to be made for the new entity, as, as well as introduction of a minimum um, revenue guarantee. Uh, those are things that obviously the new entity will have to um, pursue. And if, for example, we're going to run a low-cost airline clearly some of those um salaries and wages that lay had paid in the past a management write down those have to be significantly reduced the number of staff will have to be significantly reduced procurement will have to be far more efficient than it would have been any time in the past it just has to be a lean organization that would be positioned to serve the connectivity needs of the people of the region and I am of the view that we have the capacity so to do. And we should see COVID as a challenge to get it right, to build a sustaining layout instead of, um, you know, trying to just run away from the commitment. And let's face it, the integration movement comes at a cost. And one of the costs that is inescapable is to sustain air connectivity among the member states. And let me make the point here too. If we leave that void and we end up having an extra regional carrier, when they start to request the MRGs, you think you'll have a choice? We've seen that already in terms of um, you know the extra regional airlines moving people. The most recent one was the demands, the demand that was made by uh, Virgin Atlantic for all of us to pay millions of dollars US between two and three million US dollars a piece in order to get flights out of the United Kingdom. So I just want to caution my colleagues within the region against any knee jerk reaction to think that we can just leave, uh, let's say a vacuum for others to fill. And let me make the point here too. Those who think that the little rinky dinky airlines within the region can substitute Liat i don't subscribe to that notion so let us not squabble over those issues let us understand that yes we have a, a good brand a great brand in liat and the thing about it too is that liat has some some roots rights that i'm pretty sure that if we're able to do a liat uh, 2020 limited then we can transfer those roots rights and so on and the brand having them um, come to some agreement with the creditors that you know, those would be very beneficial than starting from scratch. And, and as I said, the risk you're running 
is that you may find that some member states within CARICOM may want to take the decision that, you know what, they want to take over um, Liat, they want the roots rights of Liat, then a country like uh, Antigua and Barbuda will resist it. And then what will happen, you have a squabble, and then we all end up having nationally alliance, and then we all have nationally alliance that will make losses because you see the market within the region is so small that it can only sustain one efficient airline. It cannot support national airlines by every country. And if already four countries within uh, um, is in Caribbean and Barbados are unable to carry the weight of Liat, which I would accept that is just top heavy. Why would anyone think that they can carry the weight of a regional airline alone? So again, as I said, I hope that there will be no form of um, opportunism or, or let's say opportunistic behavior in which individuals may want to literally um, you know, fight Antigua and Barbuda to get the, um, the, the headquarters because at the end of the day, we are not interfering with any other member state to get the headquarters of any, um, any other organization. Uh, so for example, we're not asking St. Lucia to send us to OECS. We're not asking St. Kitts to let um, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank come, uh, you know, um, domicile here. And the plethora of regional institutions that are domiciled in Barbados, we're not asking for none of them. Because we understand that um, you know you, you have to share the benefits of the integration movement. Uh, the only thing that we export literally is aviation services. Everything else we import. Trade and Tobago is like a supermarket um, for Antigua and Barbuda. Half the goods that we, we consume, they come from Trinidad and Tobago. And in many instances, we can get them in the United States cheaper, but we have chosen to buy them from, um, from Trinidad and Tobago and to eliminate the duties and taxes to make the goods more, um, more, more um, competitive coming into Antigua and Barbuda. And let's face it, you know, we have not had a lot of benefits from um, the, you know, the Eastern, um, what's it, OECS um, Union and from CARICOM. And I'm not making a case against them. But what I'm just saying here, I'm making a case that the little benefit that we get as a nation no one should envy us and to try and, um, you know, on the minus to the extent that they will displace, uh, you know, our aviation sector and to, you know, create further hardships to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And that's one of the major challenges that we have here too, because Liat is a significant contributor to the gross domestic product of Antigua and Barbuda. And uh, there's going to be significant fallout because anyhow you look at it, even if it's a scale down Liat, it's going to result in significant economic um, uh, problems and Tegan Barbuda. We're going to lose maybe a good 3-4% of GDP. And when you look at the costs associated with the liquidation, there's going to be a significant amount of um, debt that we'll have to take on. We can see, for example, that Antigua's liability could be as high as $100 million. Which, which brings me, Mr. Prime Minister, which brings you know, me to the question, which brings me to the question uh, of uh, the fact that Liat is said to owe millions of dollars. Is there a dollar figure that you can put to it at this point in time? I don't have the full details, and I don't want to get into the granular information about Liat. We are talking generally about it, and we're looking at possibilities here. I mean, I do, as I said too, I'm not, I'm not saying that Liat will be collapsed. I'm saying what is likely to happen, and to try and encourage the full cooperation of the CARICOM member states to use this as an opportunity to get a leaner airline, a new layer that will be leaner, one that will be, one that be viable and sustainable, and that there should be no squabble as to where the headquarters should be. Uh, Antigua has started, um, you know, inter, you know, um, or intra-Caribbean travel, and, um, you know, to fight us to that now, I just think that that will be unconscionable. Okay. Now, last year, um, our government, your government, rejected Barbados's offer of some forty-four million dollars for for a portion of um, uh, their shares in Liat. Um, the negotiations, as recent as sometime this week, I read that um, negotiations are still ongoing. I don't know about that. Uh, if Liat is going to die a natural death, that is Liat, nineteen seventy-four Limited. I still feel uh, very um, optimistic that there will be a Liat 2020.
But if Lee at 1974 Limited is going to die a natural death because of um, COVID, one of the casualties of COVID. And let's face it, it could have died before because of how vulnerable it was. But, you know, COVID, as you know, take out um, people who are vulnerable, who have comorbidities. And it is evident that Lee had had many comorbidities. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing to negotiate at this point.